Hey everybody, happy Friday. It is the last Friday of October. Wow, crazy. Um, I was just reflecting this week on how we're almost to 2022 and how <laughs> we all thought 2021 was gonna be an awesome year after 2020 and it hasn't really felt any different. <laughs> <laughs> so here's to 2022. I don't know. We've got a couple more months, but I always start thinking as we get closer. It's a little bit crazy. Oh, Pepper's here. Of course, you heard me talking and I don't think I have any cookies for her. She's going to get crazy. Hello, guys. Good to see you. I'm glad you're here. Um, I was just saying it's the last Friday in October. Where does the time go? I don't know. It's crazy. It is beautiful here. Okay, come here. You want to say hello? Okay, people want to say hello to you. Yes, they always say, let's see Pepper. She got a haircut this week. She's got a haircut. Say hi, guys. She's looking out the window. It looks like she's looking at the phone, but she's looking out the window. <laughs> um, I usually give them a little chew thing before I go live, and I forgot. And I keep them here in my office, and I'm out. So we'll have to see. Maybe I'll give her some twine. <laughs> All right, you go play. Go on. Um, so today we are doing a stamp set called Little Delights. And I'll be honest, I skipped over it, skipped over it, skipped over it, came back to it and started looking at it. And I thought, you know, that's a really good stamp set. It's got Merry Christmas, Trick or Treat, Ho Ho Ho, Birthday Wishes, You're a Blessing, Thank You, and Ghoulish Delights. So I'm calling it the Swiss Army Knife of stamp sets because it covers the gamut, right? I mean, all the fall holidays, you've got a birthday and a thank you. I mean, really, is there much else that you need? You know, if you had to pick one stamp set to take with you on a deserted island, <laughs> this would be it. I guess if we were on a deserted island, we would need one that said, send help. That's not on here. Anyhow, that's what we're gonna do today. I've got some cute projects to show you, a couple of kind of technique things. Um, it's a really simple stamp set, but, um, one that is, um, I think you'll get a lot of, <laughs> get a lot of use out of. They heard you. Yes. They all say hello. Now go play somewhere. Go back to your nap. She and I ran, or not ran, we walked today three miles, so she should be tired. Um, but she hears me talking. And so then she's like, hello. Okay, good. I see you guys on. Hello. Let me, um, pull up my, um, iPad and see where we are. All right, looks like we're in the right place. I was a couple minutes late because um, I was having a little bit of trouble. Let's see, do, 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 with FB. I don't want to say the words, FB. Um, <laughs> but I, I think we got it fixed out, fixed up. Um, looks like we are working today, maybe. Let's see. Okay, so I have a lot of things to show you today. If you're on my email list, which hopefully you are, because we learned a couple weeks ago, right, what it's like when we don't have social media, um, we can't communicate. So that's why it's really, really important for you to join my Facebook list. I don't send out a lot of emails. I only send out an email when I have something to tell you. Um, I don't send them out, you know, like every Tuesday or every Wednesday. I only send them out when I have something to tell you. So sometimes I might go a couple of weeks without sending an email. Sometimes I might send an email two days in a row. Usually it's about three or four times a month. So I promise I'm not going to spam you, but I think it's important for you to be on my email list. And I will tell you that I signed up for my own email list and my emails end up in my spam folder. So you got to make sure that you go to your email, whoever provides your email, Find that email in your spam. You might have other emails in there that you don't want. You got to check. Um, and then you, they give you a little like buttons, not spam or whatever, or block or whatever. So you can click not spam. What I found something that doesn't work with that is, so I have a MacBook and I have Apple Mail, you know, the little app that says, you know, you load all your email addresses in there. If I mark something not spam in there, it, it still sends it to spam. I have to actually go to Yahoo or Outlook, the actual website or program, to, and then go into my spam folder and mark those as not spam. Then it will stop sending them to spam. So if you're having that problem, 
do that. You, it's interesting what you'll find in your spam folder. There's a lot of spam, but then there'll be things in there that like, I'm like, oh my God, that's an email someone sent me. You know, not even, not even like mass emails. So anyways, if you want to be on my email list, make sure you do that. Um, I will put that link here on um, the description when we're done. It's also at the top of my new blog. If you guys haven't checked it out, make sure you go, let me see, let me pull it up, make sure that's where it is. Now I can't remember where it is. Um, we've done a lot of rearranging, we're still working on it. Um, no, it's not at the top. I take that back, you scroll down and it says join on the right side, join my mailing list to receive newsletter and special notices. All right, so that's my email list. I don't like that word newsletter, but that's just generated, okay? So that's where you would sign up on, over on my blog. Okay, a lot of words there here at the beginning. Let's get into it. Let me show you. First, I want to tell you I have a couple of these left. If you want one, let me know. I only have a few left. Um, I've um, shipped a bunch of them this week, but if you would like this month's kit, I have uh, maybe three of them left. So email me. I'm really bad with Facebook Messenger, you guys. Um, you can message me, but I don't always see it. Um, if you're like me, it'll pop up on my phone and then it goes away and then I never see it again. And usually when it pops up, I'm right in the middle of something like driving and then I forget and then I'll randomly see it three days later. So the best way to get me is always my email, um, erica at pinkbuckaroo.com. Um, so that's that. All right. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, I think what I'm going to do is flip the camera around because I, the whole reason I started talking to you about, about my e email list is that I sent out links this morning for my two Christmas classes, okay? So I'm going to turn you guys around. Um, if you want to register, I know lots of you have asked me about these two classes. They were, uh-oh, uh-oh, let's see what's happening. No, don't rotate. Let's see. It's giving me a weird message. You guys still there? Um, all right, we're good. <laughs> Everybody hold your breath. Um, I forgot what I was saying. Oh, anyway, I sent out email, an email this morning with links to the class. To register for a class, I can't put the register here button or link anywhere on social media um, or my blog, Per Stampin' Up! Policy. I can only send it through email. So I always, as soon as I post it on my blog, I also um, send an email. That way you don't have to email me and say, can I have that link? If you're already on my email list, you're gonna get it no matter what, okay? So these were the two classes that were add-on classes for the retreat box that's sold out. Um, and I promised they would be standalone classes. This one is the pretty um pillow box treats class i'm not seeing comments something's happening um so the pillow box die looks like this the pillow box die doesn't have a matching stamp set it's standalone dies by itself so the class to go ignore this for a second the class to go either includes the dies or doesn't include the dies i'm not going to cut these for you you have to have the dies if you're going to get the class to go kit okay um, so the kit you can get with the dies or without the dies. Now, the problem was, okay, so what stamp set do we use? So what I did is I just chose a basic Christmas sentiment stamp set. You probably have a sentiment stamp set you could use, or you can add this one on, Holly Jolly Wishes, to the class kit. And when you add things on your class kit, I pay the tax and shipping for you as a thank you. So class kit option one includes all six projects, and the dies. It's also going to include um, ribbon and gems, okay, as well as six make and take packets and a PDF. There's no video. Option two would include everything minus the dies, okay? So that's for those of you who own these already. Option three is PDF only. It's uh, $15. Yes, my email said it was $150. Yes, thank you to everyone who pointed my typos out. I'm sure you can figure out that the PDF is $15, right? Not $150. I don't know. Maybe it's that good. Maybe it's worth $150. But no, it's only $15. Um, and then option four is for my downline. They get the make and take kit for uh, this time's $25. 
Um, so option one, here's my list. 74 with the dies, 42 without the dies, 15 for the PDF. It'll ship, shipping has gone up. Um, thank you very much, USPS. Flat rate shipping is now $9. <laughs> unbelievably. And the reason why I use flat rate shipping, you guys, is because it has insurance, it has tracking, and it's simple. Um, it would be a nightmare for me to figure shipping on 150 kits. I mean, if everybody, if we're going to use weight and different zip codes, I just couldn't do it. So that's the way I do it, $9. Um, but here's the deal. This time I have a second class and you can combine these two into one envelope. So listen carefully, all of my friends who are going to register for both classes. You register for this class, okay? Then you go over to this page and you register for the Be Jolly class. This is the Christmas card to go class. Ten cards, it's five designs, two of each. You're going to get a pack of paper, pack of um, Simply Elegant trim, and a pack of rhinestones. Ten cards, ten envelopes, PDF. Um, let's say you're going to register for this class. There is a promo code field there. And if you type in free ship, all caps, it will subtract the shipping from this class. So then you're only paying shipping one time over there on the pillow box class. Now, if you're only buying this class, you still have to pay shipping, okay? But if you're buying both, you only have to pay shipping on one of them. Now, here's another caveat. Sometimes you guys add on, let's say you're getting this class with a stamp set, you're getting that class with the dies and stamp set, you, you add on blends, you add on adhesive, you add on, I don't even remember what I had add on, and then it doesn't all fit in a padded envelope. That happens rarely, but think about that as you're ordering. Um, if you're doing a bunch of add-ons to both, they won't both fit in one padded envelope. So there's that. But anyway, this class is the card class. This class is the Christmas treats class. Very, both of them very cute in my opinion. <laughs> um, I kind of kept it simple on my blog post. Um, usually I break it all down, but I kept it simple because I posted them all in one post today. If you click the link in my email, it will take you to the registration page that really breaks all of it down if you want the, the nitty gritty details on each class. Um, let's see. Oh, here's the other thing. Okay. November 14th is a cutoff for these. Usually I have class kits out within a week. Usually it's like five days. I have them in the mail because I don't cut and ship and pack until I have closed the class registration and then I do it all at once. But here's the deal this time. Within that time frame, that third week of November, I am shipping the Retreat to Go boxes, Club Create kits, and these. That's like six or 700 packages. I mean, it's a lot. So... With that being said, I'm giving myself two-week turnaround time on this. Um, that means the class uh, registration fee, uh, registration closes the 14th. I'm giving myself until the 27th to have them in the mail. They might go earlier because what I'm doing right now, this week and next week, is I'm cutting and trying to get ahead. Um, so hopefully, fingers crossed, I can do it faster than that. But I just want you guys to be a little bit patient with me, knowing that these may not get to you till the first week of December. Okay, any questions? I'm not seeing any comments. Um, Uh-oh, let's see. Oh, thanks, Terry. Yeah, so I got my nails done for fall, but it looks really weird with Christmas projects. <laughs> and this was supposed to be a really cute plaid that doesn't look like the picture I showed her, but she tried her best. And I, that's fine. It's still cute. Anyways, if you want to register for either of those classes, you need to look in your email if you're on my email list or email me and I'll send them to you. Or last uh, today's PDF has all the details here, okay? Why can't you just give me the comments, Facebook? Come on, give me the comments. Lots of comments. Where do you get your little tubs? These little tubs, these are just from TG Maxx, Target. Okay, the last thing I wanted to tell you, oh, I need to put this back over here. Um, the last thing I wanted to tell you was the PDF for my holiday retreat 
projects is ready. It is in my PDF store. There are five cards and three 3D projects. If you are getting the Retreat to Go box from me, don't go buy it because you're getting it. That's part of what you paid me for already. Um, but if you, I know lots of you wanted just the PDF. It's ready. There's a little envelope, um, wallet, some little treat packaging, and then of course five cards. Um, and the PDF store link is at the top of my blog or it's on today's PDF right here. Okay, there's that. Um, let's see, what else do I have to tell you? I didn't pull out all the regular stuff today. Um, I had the all-star tutorial bundle this month. Blackberry Beauty is right here. You'll get it free if you spend $50 with me online. Um, and I will email these out after I haven't, I usually send them on Friday, so I haven't sent them fr today yet. So if you ordered in the last week, I'll be sending it to you this afternoon. It's free. It's, a uh, all 12 video tutorials, all featuring Blackberry beauty. Um, November's will all feature sweet symmetry. And I have my project right here. Let me see, where did it go? Well, I had it right here. It's really cute. Well, okay, yeah, here, 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 here. And we're gonna have a blog hop, I think, next week so you guys can see the new projects. Here's my project for Sweet Symmetry. This is so cute. Uh-oh, something came off. I lost a piece right there. Um, this is next month, Sweet Symmetry's um, All-Star Tutorial PD PDF. And for my Club Create people, I've decided that we're doing Sweet Symmetry for December's Club Create. I know I can't make everyone happy and I should never have even said <laughs> the things I was considering because I've, hear, I've heard equally from both camps. But here's the deal. I was thinking about doing the penguin, but that penguin punch is on back order forever and I am worried that it's sitting out on one of those ships in the Pacific and we'll never get it. And then it would be a sad day when you couldn't do your club project. So we're doing Sweet Symmetry in December. Beautiful spring colors getting us past Christmas and into um, the new year. So Club Create December will be Sweet Symmetry. And November All-Star Tutorial will be Sweet Symmetry. You're going to love it, I promise. I promise you. All right, let's see. Uh, door prizes from last week. If you share the video... Um, either on Facebook or YouTube, you are entered to win a prize. So I picked three winners from last week. Debbie Schull, Donna Bradford, Irene Miller. Um, you all are getting the stitched greenery die. Donna and Debbie, I know I have your mailing addresses. Irene, I don't think I have yours. So if you'll email me or message me, I would love to send you this as a thank you. So thank you very much for sharing the video. I have three more this week. Um, one of my favorite stamp sets. I did. I just did a class on this, a cloche class, last week. I sent it out this week. Um, and I think we need to do a Facebook Friday with this stamp set. It's too cute. I just, I think I can come up with four more projects because it's so cute. So anyway, if you would like to win this stamp set, share my video on Facebook and put in the comments to let me know that you did. Um, or YouTube. And I will pick three winners next week, okay? All righty. We are here. We are done. My table is mostly cleaned off. Let me situate some things here. Um, if you have never joined me for Facebook Friday, welcome. I do Facebook Live pretty much every Friday. I do take some Fridays off occasionally for certain things. But most Fridays at 2 o'clock. Um, central, 2 p.m. Central. And I usually like to uh, pick a product, either a bundle or a stamp set, and come up with three or four projects using it. Um, and I type a PDF that looks like this. It's over at pinkbuckroo.com. It's free. Has all the measurements and supplies listed. Now, <laughs> you guys, if you see major mistakes on this PDF, which I can already see a few messy things, you have to you have to hear my crazy last few days. I just need about 12 more hours in every day in order to get everything done. So I was doing this, typing this up while I was doing about three other things. So I apologize if it's not perfect. Hopefully it's good enough. <laughs> Sometimes done is good enough, right? <sighs> 
Um, the other part of Facebook Friday is that this is like a card class. And if you would like the make and takes for free, I will send them to you for free um, with a 30, $35 order or more by Monday at midnight. Um, this is this, it, we have a new host code. Make sure you use the host code. Unless your order is over $150, then you get the Stampin' Rewards and I'll still send you this for free. Um, they look like this. I do scoring, cutting, whatever you need. I do not do stamping. What you see here is a thank you tag. It's not part of your project. Um, you will need the Little Delight stamp set, ink and adhesive. All right, and then somebody asked me, I think it was Maria asked me last week and I missed it, what do I do with my extra kits? Um, I actually cut a few extras each week in case some get lost in the mail because we all know that happens. Um, and then about once or twice a year, I have a grab bag Facebook Friday project sale. Um, usually I do it like at the end of a catalog when we're all just kind of sitting around waiting for a new catalog to come out, um, which will probably be end of December is the next time I'll do one. All right. All right. You can't just buy those outright. You only get them free with an order, but... Once or twice a year, I'll do those. Usually, it's just once a year I do those grab bags. Okay. I'm thirsty. Sorry. I think we're ready. We are ready. Now, who? You know, and I meant to clean. Look, it's... Do I have that spritzer? Who was it that told me that little trick to keep a spritzer over here? So that my um, chamois would not be... Do you know what? I think I have a bottle of water. Eh, I don't. Oh, well, it's hopefully it's damp enough. Um, okay, so we're going to use Little Delights. And like I said at the beginning, this um, stamp set is kind of your Swiss Army knife of stamp sets. It is all occasion, really. It has lots of uses. Um, I wish I had used it earlier so we could have made a Halloween card. I mean, I guess I could have made a Halloween card today, but I just feel like we're so close to Halloween. You guys are probably done with Halloween, right? Cindy, isn't that a great idea for a spritzer? You keep it over here with water in it, da -da -da, spritz it, it's wet. Except you have to know where your spritzer is. It doesn't help you if your spritzer's not here, darn it. Okay, so the first card we're going to make, I have to tell you, I saw... I saw something somewhere. Do you ever do you ever do that? You saw something somewhere, and then you can't remember where you saw it, and you can't find it to go back to it to to see it again. I saw something somewhere where they did a little paper weave, and they taped the strips down to the to their grid paper. Well, I couldn't find it, and then I found it after I had done this project. It was a um, story, an Instagram story on Stampin' Ups. Uh, main Instagram account. I had taken a screenshot of it, but then I couldn't find the actual, it was a video, so I couldn't find it. So I'm going to show you my version of that. Um, this is a, what I call report card a pocket. Remember when we were kids, your report card came in like a pocket like that and you pulled it out. Now my kids don't even get paper report cards. I had to ask my daughter to show me her report card. <laughs> On, on the app this week. I mean, it's weird. But anyways, that's what I call this a report card envelope. Um, it folds up at the bottom like this. Now, this one you'll see has, well, it has little, little crumb, paper crumbs on the back of it. So just hold, please. Don't look. Um, <laughs> whatever. Um, this one, so this one I did with a punch we don't have a punch. So in this one with a video, I did a die. So you decide, I'm sure you guys have circle punches. And I think we're just going to use a circle punch today because I think I like, I think I like it in the front. You could run it through and just get one side. Well, maybe we'll see. But anyway, first, what we're going to do is make that envelope. So let's do that. And you know what? Another thing that I did in my absolute craziness yesterday I had, and I tell you guys all the time, write your measurements down in a um, notebook, right? Don't I tell you that? Well, yesterday I, I had the measurements for this on a little square of paper. Literally, it was a scrap, cardstock scrap. And guess what? I lost it. So I'm going by memory, okay? I have it typed here. This is what I think it is. And we're going to see if this is right. 
Um, you're going to need a six and a half by nine and a half inch piece of basic white thick cardstock. We're going to score the long side at two and a half and six and three fourths. Ignore my markers. I have those set up for something else. Now, let me make sure. Yep. Okay. That's right. See, sometimes I can remember things. Two and a half, six and three fourths. Turn it and score one inch from one side, either one. So either one or five and a half. All right. All right. Let me move that out of the way. Then grab your bone folder and burnish your lines. Hello from Florida, Stacy. Hello, Teresa. I'm glad you're here. You're not too late. We're just starting our projects. All right. Not a lot of cutting to do here. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Shaking things around. I'm going to cut with these scissors that need to be cleaned. I'm going to cut out the two side you know, corners, these two little side pieces right here. All right, and then I'm gonna cut the corners off of that and the corners off of that. Now, you know, I'm just gonna be lazy. Is that all right, guys? Can I just be lazy for a second? And I'm just gonna grab a circle punch because I know you guys have circle punches, right? We don't sell them anymore. I don't know why, but I'm sure you guys have circle punches. All right, so get a scrap piece of paper. Let me get a colored piece. Um, okay, I'm just gonna use this out of my recycle bin. Punch whatever circle size you're gonna do, all right? And you're gonna, because le learn from my mistakes. If I take this right now and I just punch, I promise you it's gonna be off-centered. No matter how centered it looks, it will be off-centered. All right, trust me. So get a scrap and, and punch your circle and put it on there where it looks centered. So you can look at it and say it's centered or it needs to be moved over a little bit, okay? Like that. That looks pretty centered, right? Then take your punch and put it over that circle and punch. And there, now you are perfectly centered, hopefully. <laughs> All right, we're going to do just end over end like that, okay? And then this guy just folds up like that. All right, so there's your envelope, okay? Now I have a little piece of Whisper White we're gonna do on the inside in a minute. All right, hopefully it's, there we go. All right, but first, I'm gonna show you this weaving pattern. And I have to admit, this is a little extra. I got a little bit extra with this. <laughs> there are ways to simplify this. Um, but you know, I like to do things the hard way sometimes sometimes hard the hard way makes it look really cute so what I did is I cut a bunch of strips using the strap from the purse die the um, all dressed up die I cut a bunch of them in flirty flamingo just jade and poppy parade the other thing that I did is I put on the backs I put I went ahead and put tear and tape on each end and the middle. That's probably overkill. You probably don't need that much adhesive. However, when you see what I'm gonna do, you'll you'll see why. You guys know I'm like a kindergartner with my liquid adhesive, and the first time I made this, I tried to use liquid adhesive, and it was a disaster. So, you decide how you wanna do your adhesive, okay? So I did tear and tape. Um, the other thing I was gonna tell you that if you don't have the all dressed up dies, there's a die that's almost the same in the um, suit and tie dies. It's like the, you know, the center of the shirt has the stitching. If you don't have either of those, then just cut some strips. It doesn't have to be stitched. These are, I believe they're about three eighths of an inch. All right. Okay, so I was inspired by somebody on Stampin' Up's stories. It was probably an artisan or concept artist, I don't remember. Um, but they taped their strips to 
their grid paper, which was brilliant because then when you weave, the papers aren't all slipping around, right? What I ended up doing is a little bit different. So it didn't quite work exactly how I was thinking it was gonna work, but it still worked. All right, so you've got your, you've got your little um, envelope here. And you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna get a little bit of post-it tape just to hold it down so that it doesn't move around, okay? All right, I'm gonna start with one strip and I'm gonna take the adhesive off both ends and I'm gonna go as far as I can go and still be, uh, let's see. Do I wanna do it like that, like that, like that, like that. All right, now I'm sticking it down over here, okay? Now I'm gonna do, whoops, I'm gonna do the next color, Flirty Flamingo, and I'm gonna stick it down also. Kind of following that same, notice I'm not sticking these down yet. You can take the adhesive off, but I'm not sticking them down yet, okay? Your uh, Take your pick tool makes taking the adhesive backing off very easy, okay? Just like that, and then we'll do another Poppy Parade, sticking it to the grid paper because it's gonna hold it in place when we start doing our weaving. All right, and one more. Okay, now we're gonna come over to the other side. Well, I said it was easy. Come on, take your pick tool, do your job. You have a f only a couple of jobs. I was gonna say you have one job, but actually <laughs> the take your pick tool has many jobs. All right, so over, under, over, under. Like back in kindergarten, you guys, you, you remember, right? You remember how? You go under, over, under, over. And I'm gonna stick that down. Let's see, maybe I'm gonna come this far over like that. You know, I think I'm not gonna stick it down yet because now that we have those in place, these we can kind of play around with. All right, now this time we're gonna do the opposite. We're gonna go over the Poppy Parade, under the Flirty Flamingo, and so on. So each time you want to vary your weave, starting, <laughs> that sounds weird, starting over or under. Um, Trish, Trisha, what did you just say with adhesive sheets? You know what? Yeah, um, yeah, you're right. So adhesive sheets would cover the whole thing and then it would be stuck down, right? And you couldn't slide them under. So I put tear and tape in the middle of each one, which really probably is a waste because you're only gonna need to add adhesive to the middle of a couple of them. And I'll show you in just a second. And glue dots would suffice in that, in that instance. All right, now this is definitely a stepped up card. This isn't, you know, one you're gonna make 500 of. Unless, I don't know, unless you like complicated over the top mass production. I think it would be too much. Okay, so now, does it look good from where you guys stand or sit? I am, oops, because I can't look right over it. I think it's pretty even, right? All right, now I'm gonna take these and I'm gonna press them in. Press them all in. Now these, so this one, right here we have the adhesive on the end, but see how it's way over here? We really need it to be pressed in here. So lucky for us, we put adhesive in the middle. See how that one works? But again, you only are gonna need that on a couple of them. So maybe only put your middle adhesive on, you know, like use a glue dot for that middle adhesive. Okay, so now, uh oh, right here, we gotta do these. Let's take that adhesive off. Now you could do any color, right? This is a fun little Christmas um, color scheme, but you can do any color you want. It could be birthday, it could be whatever. 
Uh-oh, got one more right here. So move them around. Find which ones you haven't stuck down yet. Okay. Pull that adhesive backing out and lay that down like that. Okay, so now it's stuck to the paper, which is fine. I was holding it in place, and I'm just going to take my scissors and just go over here and cut it off. Right? Don't need that anymore. And let's see. I probably need to just tear the sheet off like that. Come this way. I'm right-handed, so I need to get it on this side. All right, don't cut your card base. Everything else can just be cut apart like that, okay? Now we're gonna, we wanna make it nice and neat. This is what was stuck to that card I turned over a minute ago, all these little things. So take your scissors and cut them apart. And there you have it. Now look, I could add another one right here if I wanted to. What color would that be? Green? Do I want to add that? You know, I think I'm just going to leave it. Oh, I could add one there too. See, I mean, I could just keep going and go. Ooh, hmm, maybe I do want. No, I'm just going to leave it. So you just keep adding on until you feel like you're finished. But for the sake of the video, I'm going to stop there. What I'm going to do here, we've got a few loose ones. If you, there's no adhesive under there, grab a glue dot, because remember, it's stuck down all over the place. Things are stuck down to it over here. I'm not real worried about these ends. So if you have any loose ends, just take that, take your pick tool and stick a glue dot underneath there. All right, cute, right? Do you guys think that's cute? I think it's very cute. Very cute, a little complicated, but worth it, worth it. Okay, so now all we're gonna do is finish up our stamping. We haven't done any stamping yet. I'm gonna do the Merry Christmas diagonally that way. I'm gonna take the little card I put on the inside and I have a Poppy Parade circle that is the same size as this, remember? And I wanna make sure that it's gonna be where I want it to be. So let's, let's line it up right there fold it over and well now I moved it now I moved it of course so let's do it like this let's see we'll stick it on and then we'll put it on here let's see are we right in the right place no we are not let's make sure that we are centered as centered as we can get it okay I'm overthinking it there we go. Okay, now, last but not least, we're gonna use the stamp set. Not only does it have a sentiment for each of those little holidays, it has a basic image, just a real basic image that you can use. And I'm gonna do the little um, Christmas light. And I'm just gonna do it a couple of times in each color. This is what I needed my chamois for. Um, down the side of this little card, so that is Poppy Parade, and then we've got, I almost said Emerald Envy. That's an old color, right? We don't have that anymore, gosh. It's weird how your brain recalls things, like just brings things up randomly. That is just Jade. And then we've got Flirty Flamingo and Flirty Flamingo. Okay. But wait, but wait, there's more. I'm gonna take my basic black stamp and write marker and draw a line and see how I'm putting these little curly cues in it and connect these lights. I love Christmas light stamps. We had a whole set, remember one year of Christmas lights and I loved it. And then like that. Okay, all right, put that in, slide it down, and then we must embellish. Pull out the best ribbon we've ever had. Now, it's Halloween weekend. You guys, are you doing any fun things for Halloween? 
It's on a Sunday night, which makes Monday pretty miserable for the teachers. These Halloween should always be on a Saturday night. My kids pretend like they're too old, but they will make up some random costume, I'm sure, this weekend. Actually, Emma, my middle child, has already bought her costume. She was all about it. And they will go and get tons of candy, I'm sure. I hope you guys... Whoa, that's weird. Stick that back in like that. I'm going to add a few of these basic rhinestones. I hope you guys, wherever you are, things are getting back to normal and trick-or-treating is acceptable this year. I feel like it's pretty widely acceptable this year, maybe. Remember last year? They were saying we couldn't trick-or-treat. <laughs> ah. Okay, there we go. What do you guys think? Cute? I think it's pretty cute. I would love to see this in different colors. So if you make this in different colors, please send me a picture because I would love to see it. All right, project one is done. I hope you guys liked it. Y'all are very quiet today. Very quiet. What's going on? Why are you so quiet? Maybe it's my iPad that's quiet. Oh, whose birthday is it on Saturday? Oh, look, now I'm seeing comments. Where did I see that? I mean, it's your birthday, hopefully. Let's see, your birthday is, yeah, hopefully I already sent you a birthday card. I mean, it's on my team, and she, I send my team birthday cards. Let's see. Um, now, Trisha, you're taking, what is she going to be this year? Grandma, Grandma's, neighbor, Grandma, Grandma's neighborhood. I heard Al Roker say on the Today Show this morning, he gives out full-size candy bars, which we all know there's always that one house, right? That gives out full-size candy bars. He said last year he handed out 900 full-size candy bars. I have lots of questions about that. <laughs> First of all, did he go to Costco? And how many candy bars are in a box? I mean, what, maybe 20? So how, I mean... Did he have like a forklift deliver these to his house? That's a lot of candy bars. How can that possibly be true? 900 full-size candy bars. I don't know. I'm calling on that. I'm not sure about that one. <laughs> I don't know. Did anybody else hear that? Oh, that was a little crazy. Our neighborhood is really a great trick-or-treating neighborhood, although we live in a cul-de-sac, and last year we didn't even get rid of all of our candy, which is very unusual. We used to have a lot of kids that lived in our neighborhood, but last year our neighbor, our, I mean, on our street, last year our street was kind of dark. Nobody was out, so everybody would just pass our street by. Hopefully that doesn't happen this year, because I do have a lot of candy. Rapunzel, oh, you know, my little one was uh, Merida, one year, she was probably about the age of yours, maybe like three. And it is the most hilarious pictures we have. So you make sure you take lots of pictures because when they become teenagers, it's really fun. <laughs> Cindy, they come in, yeah, 15 to 30 per box, right? So if you are going to have 900 candy bars, that's a lot of boxes. You heard that too, Eileen? Crazy. Crazy. 400? Now everyone has grown, so only about 50 last year. Yeah, you know what, Cindy? Neighborhoods have, like, age, like you age out. And when a neighborhood's new, lots of little kids. And then as a neighborhood gets older, not so many. I know. It's sad. Okay, moving on. I know you guys are like, enough. This card, I always love to do a pump, punch art pumpkin. And so I thought this was the perfect uh, stamp set for that this year. I'm using this little... Um, um, foliage stamp right here um, as the little, uh, you know, the sprig behind the pumpkin. Now, we're going to stop here for just one second because I want to show you guys something. I talk to you all the time. Do I have Instagram? I don't think I have Instagram on here. I talk to you all the time about this account on Instagram. Oh, hold on. Is it going to log me in? Why are you telling me I'm not logged in? Well, this week on, oh good, I do have the app. I don't use my iPad very often. This week, can you guys see this week 
on Stampin' Through the Catalog. See right there? Stampin' Through the Catalog. This is the, the Instagram account I tell you guys about. They do different stamp sets each week, and then they will share, you know, if you tag them in your project, they'll share your project in their feed. And so this week, they are doing the set that we're doing right now, Little Delights. Look. So if you need more ideas, go over to Instagram and follow them, Stampin' Through the Catalog. Um, they do videos sometimes. They, I mean, they're really good. They, it, this is, um, see right here? Oh, look, they shared mine. Look at that one. Just some really clever ideas. So just want to make sure you guys are following them. You can get really good ideas over there. And they'll share yours too. Um, so little delights. Lots of ideas over there. I... I'll be honest, I didn't, I wasn't able to find a lot of ideas. Um, I don't think there were that, I didn't think that there were that many when I was kind of looking for inspiration. So maybe people, this is one of those sets, it's kind of a sleeper set in the catalog. Okay, we're going to emboss two things. I've got cinnamon cider, and we're going to emboss cinnamon cider in the macrame embossing folder. Don't you love this one? It's really fun, macrame take you back to the 70s. And then I've got three very vanilla circles, and I can't remember what size they are. Two and a half, two and a fourth, two and two and an eighth. That's a weird size. Um, and I'm going <laughs> to I'm gonna emboss these in the time-worn type embossing folder, all right? So get your cut and emboss machine. These will not fit in the mini cut and emboss machines. You're going to need the big one for this, for these folders. We do have folders that fit in the mini if you have the mini only. And you take off the top three plates and just put number two on top of number one. And there you go. So cinnamon cider, that's for the background. And then our three, whoops, our three very vanilla circles. with a time-worn type, which is a great stamp set. It's a mouthful. Time-worn type. Just, and I don't really know how to describe what this is. It's like some, some like old newspaper, newsprint maybe. So it's got kind of a, I don't even know how to describe it. Some type, some words, some letters, and then just kind of some, <laughs> I don't know. What do you call that? Some old markings old marks. All right. So now we can't just leave these pumpkins like this though. We're, we're going to add some ink to them to make those letters pop out just a little bit. So I've got crumb cake and I've got my blending brush. I don't want this to be real heavy. So make sure you run it off on your grid sheet before you do this. And I'm just going to go around the edges like this. All right. My oldest is coming home for the weekend. Again, I'm so excited. She uh, was going to stay. We play Texas this weekend. It's a pretty big game, but she decided to come home. The boyfriend won out. She has Her boyfriend lives here. So she's coming home. We're very excited. We get excited when she comes home. It makes me nervous when she's driving, but she'll she'll handle it. We have, she has to come down I-35. And if you're not familiar with I-35, it's the worst. She actually could go a different way, but that's the straight route. Okay, so I've done my pumpkins. And I'm going to um, pick out which one you want to be in the front. It doesn't really matter. And I'm going to put some dimensionals on it. And I'm going to cover up one of the other pumpkin, I mean, one of the other circles about halfway. Okay, and then I'm going to put dimensionals over here on the other side. And like that. Okay, so there's your pumpkin, your round pumpkin. If you have oval dies, the oval dies will do the same thing. I'm reading comments. Um, you'll have a tall pumpkin if you have um, oval dies. We don't have oval dies anymore. Now, to get this um, little branch or stem on our pumpkin, I am going to 
put my very vanilla scalloped contour. This is from the contour scallop dies. Scallop stitched rectangle. I'm going to put it on here and then put my pumpkin where I think it's going to go, where I want it to go. And then I'm going to take the stamp and I can tell that it's not clean. Well, it looks pretty good. And I'm going to just set it here like that. All right. And lay that down. This is the Stamparatus, if you've never seen it before. It's a stamp positioning tool. Now, to make these different colors, I'm going to use Stamp and Write markers. Stamp and Write markers are different from Stamp and Blends. And I have tried to do this technique with Stamp and Blends and did not have very much success. Um, it's a different type of ink, so it's going to do it's going to do differently. And photopolymer stamps don't always take the ink like this very well, um, but you can play around with it. Sometimes you have to clean the stamp to get, sometimes the ink will like bead up on the photopolymer. Did I do this color? No. Um, and if that happens, clean stamp, you can get like an eraser and kind of rub it on there to kind of rough, roughen it just a little bit and the ink um, will go on a little bit better. Now I can see I've left that one, it's pooling. The other option you could do is to mask and stamp three different times using the ink pads. All right, now, when I stamp with stamp and Write markers, it never looks quite like it would with a stamp pad. So that's why I like to use stamp and Write markers because then I can do a couple of layers. This color is Mossy Meadow. Okay, so if you do it twice, see now once you do it twice, it does look uh, bolder and uh, more solid. Okay, so now pumpkin pie. And last but not least, one of my favorite colors as of late, cinnamon cider. Cinnamon cider needs to stay. Cinnamon cider and uh, bumblebee. I like those in colors. All right, so now we've got a nice solid um, image. All right, bring back your pumpkins and Yes, I'm gonna use a lot of dimensionals on this card. This card will require you to up the postage. It needs a non-machinable stamp. Have you guys bought non-machinable stamps before? I don't buy the regular stamps anymore because all of my cards need non-machinable stamps. Let me show you what they are. And I can never remember how much they are because I buy several sheets at a time. It's the butterflies. Let me see. There's a yellow butterfly too. And you guys don't feel like you have to go to, well, I don't have any of the yellow ones. Usually I have the yellow ones. Don't feel like you have to go to the post office either. You can order stamps directly from the United States Postal Service website. Now, yes, they do charge shipping <laughs> to mail you some stamps, but it's minimal. And I would gladly pay to a few, you know, a dollar or whatever it is to not have to go into the post office. Oh, I hate going to the post office. Okay, a little strip of cork, a little strip, just about five eighths of an inch thick, about maybe an inch long, cut one, ang one end at an angle. Now we're gonna use um, the sentiment that says, you're such a blessing, right here in the middle of this stitched label, very vanilla stitched label. This stitch label is from the Tasteful Label Dies. All right, let's put that right there. And then of course we need a bow. Come on, Facebook, show me comments. Ah, Il Elaine, they used to be 60 cents. Yeah, I think maybe they're 70. Post postage has gone up. Did you guys see what I just did there? This is a double bow. You fold the linen thread or twine or whatever you're using in half, two pieces, and then you just tie a bow with them, both of them at the same time. So you have kind of a more full, thicker bow. Postage has gone up. That, like I was just mentioning at the beginning, my class ago, I usually charge $8 for that flat rate envelope, but now has gone up. And I actually get a little bit of a discount because I use stamps.com, but it's still $9. It's outrageous, outrageous. And then 
It takes forever to get to you. I won't even talk about it. I ordered something from my husband on Etsy two and a half weeks ago. And it's something that can be, it's a sticker for his car. You know, I just put that on the wrong side. Um, so it's being mailed in just a regular envelope, right? Still not here. It's still not here. I, we, I have tracking and it hasn't been updated since the 22nd. And they just tell us it's just only going to get worse. Very frustrating. So if you order something from me, the moral of the story is we all going to have to have our patient's pants on <laughs> this holiday season, even more than before. Patient's pants. It's crazy. And they tell you that you have insurance, but then when you try to file a claim, they say, oh, I'm sorry, we're not paying for that. That's just fun times. <laughs> Anyhow, there we go. During my griping, my postal service rant, we finished the card. How cute are these? These would make good little invitations too, right? Maybe to like Thanksgiving dinner, if you wanted to send your friends and family a little invite. Or... Um, fall wedding. I don't know. It's cute. You could change the sentiment to anything. I love those embossing folders. You guys have those embossing folders? Um, Cindy, don't feel stupid. Everybody says that. Oh my gosh. Why didn't I think about it? Just fold the string in half. I know. I know. Sometimes the simplest things are the hardest things for me to think of. I'm sure you guys are like that too. I do something that's like 10 times harder than it has to be. Yeah, that's just how my brain works. Okay, we've got one more project left, and it's the easiest one of the day, so we're almost done. Let me get everything out of here. Now, for my Club Create people, if you didn't hear me at the beginning, I have decided on Sweet Symmetry for December's Club Create. I know some of you are going to be mad because that's not what you wanted me to choose, but... I had to really take into account of what I think is going to be available. There's a lot of things going on to back order and oh, it's very stressful on my end. But I promise you, you will not be sorry. The colors in that sweet symmetry paper is gorgeous. And the, the, I have done three out of the five already and they're really cute. Okay, sorry. That was like a little caveat. In fact, the colors are very similar to this, aren't they? Just Jade, Flirty Flamingo, Knight of Navy. Very cute. Okay, so last, we're going to make a birthday card. This card was inspired by, hold on, let me get a drink. My friend, Cindy Schuster, she now works for Stampin' Up, but we were on the artist and design team together many years ago. And she posted a card, um, and I took a screenshot of it. And then when I went back today to find it, to link it, I couldn't find it. So I don't know if she took it down. Um, but I love what she did. Is she, she took this um, rectangle right here. This is the Stitch So Sweetly rectangle. She cut it in half and made it a square. I was like, oh my gosh. See, another one of those simple, simple things. If you don't have a square, a scallop square, you just make one. So smart. All right, so... First, I'm going to stamp a background with these party hats. And when I do this, I always start in the middle. And I'm going to tell you right now, mine are not going to be straight. And I'm that's fine. See, already, that one's not straight. It's okay. They don't have to be straight. This is kind of just a, this is not our focal point. This is our background. So do a line across like that. If you want it to be straight, then get out a ruler. Use your Stamparatus or something, but I mean, I don't have time for that. <laughs> Honestly, tell me, when you looked at that card, did you look at how straight the party hats in the background were? No, you were looking at that focal point, which was the square with all the, the stuff on it. All right, so I'm just gonna keep going. This is just jade ink, just jade cardstock. Maybe some of you are perfectionist and I drive you crazy because I'm not a perfectionist. And if you're a perfectionist, more power to you. Everybody just does it the way that they do it, right? And 
maybe you don't even want to put them in a line. You're just going to do them like boop, 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 boop all over. That works too. Because as you can see, this does take some time. Do I have any baseball fans out there? Any World Series watchers? I was lucky enough to go to the World Series game night before last with my husband. He is a big Houston Astros fan, and Houston is about three hours from us. So we packed it up and drove down there and watched the game. It was really fun, except I will tell you, many of you will be able to relate. We had really good seats. My husband takes it very seriously. We analyzed. We compared we did all this and then we get there and the seats are great because we got there you know we, he's got to get there for batting practice when we were there like hours before and then the people all come and guess what they're all standing up the whole game and sh us shorties can't see a thing all i could see is a bunch of a back a bunch of the back of lots of guys heads that's all i could see i could not see a thing now i could see when the ball went way up in the air but I couldn't see anything directly across in front. It was very frustrating. But, I mean, I don't know. It is what it is, right? How many of you have short girl problems? Short girl problems. I like being short. I don't mind being short, except in those instances. And my husband is uh, pretty tall, 6'3". And he keeps like saying, well, just stand on your tiptoes. I'm like, for four hours? No, I don't think so. No, thanks. <laughs> it's all right. We were there for him. Not for me. Although I really did have a lot of fun. All right. So did you see what I did? I cut that in half. It doesn't have to be exact. Um, <laughs> Gail, go raise. Now, I will tell you, do I have any um, Braves fans on here? I'm sure I do. We like the Braves, too. I will tell you that if it wasn't the Astros playing... Yep, I see all the Braves fans. If it wasn't the Astros playing, we would be cheering for the Braves. We like the Braves, too. I just, um, you know, it's our hometown team. You got to you gotta cheer for your, kind of your hometown team. I can't remember. Did I put dimensionals on this? I did not. Okay. Oh, I know what I did. Okay. Hello, Erica. Focus. I put dimensionals on the back like this. Put this on here like that. Then put dimensionals down here like this. And then we put the lower part down here, overlapping so that we have a square. <laughs> okay, now this guy, I want him to stick out a little bit further. So what I'm going to do, this is a vellum star spray. Would you call it a spray, a star spray? And he's gonna go like that. We want him to kind of stick out those ends. So, the last two times I made this card, I stuck him in at the last minute. This time I'm trying to think ahead. We're also gonna take, I don't know how I'm gonna hear that down yet, hold on. I'm gonna take some of this gold cord. This is the Simply Elegant trim. It comes in gold and silver. Wrap it around three times. And I think I've told you guys, when I was on the artisan design team, we all <laughs> would laugh because there's different ways to do this. You know, make a little nest or a little loop of, of um, twine or ribbon. Okay, yeah, I'm just going to put these on in a little while. I don't like them right there, right now. So you can do diff this in different ways. One of our designers said she took it and like put it in her hand like a messy ball and then stuck it down which I thought was pretty fun. But I always try to keep it somewhat in a semblance of order like that so I can kind of manipulate it. I don't want it to be perfect. I want it to be a little bit wild, right? And not real symmetrical. So I'm gonna use dimensionals here to hold it down because we're gonna put something on top of it like that, okay? Now this guy is sticking out in a weird place. See, I wanna be able to be in control. I don't want it to, I don't wanna not be able to control where it goes. So, oh, would you come on? There we go. I'm gonna stick that down into that adhesive. Okay, all right, all right. 
I like it. I like it. You know what? I think we're just going to stick those on at the end because I, I, I just, I don't know. I think maybe I was, I did it the right way the first two times. I was thinking maybe I would put it on first underneath, but no. Okay. We're going to use the birthday wishes stamp set. I mean, a uh, sentiment <laughs> stamp set. Oh my gosh. The wheels are coming off. Uh, birthday wishes, flirty flamingo on the right side. Did I scare you? Did you think I was going to stamp like black, muddy pink? I stained my birthday wishes stamp set, um, by stamping it in stays on. It's okay. It still works fine, but that's why it's, it looks like that. Okay. Now for that birthday hat, let's bring back that birthday hat. I'm going to stamp it first. Let's do, since we, it already has just Jade, I'm going to do the just Jade hat diagonal like that then i'm going to do it over here on a piece of scrap paper because you know what's coming you know i can't not do some fussy cutting today i know you got to do some fussy cutting all right then i'm going to take the misty moonlight and i'm going to overlap right here like this and it looks ugly right you're like erica that doesn't look good well hold on hold on let me show you I stamped it there for the star because that little star, that would, that, that would be a little bit tricky to cut out, fussy cut. So I'm just going to take my scissors and cut out the hat part. Really easy. It's just a triangle. Small, not a lot of curves, easy. Okay. And the star, we're not going to worry about because we stamped it and it's there already. So now we're going to uh, put this hat over this one so you don't see that messy overlap. But see that? The star is there. Okay, so there you go. There's that. All right, now come over here and let's put. Oh, am I out of dimensionals? Almost. We're going to put this is a stitched rectangle. I didn't mention that. This is a stitched rectangle from the stitched rectangles, <laughs> the die set called stitched rectangles. Okay, so there's that. Now I've cut out some stars from the stitched stars and I've cut two of the little tiny ones from um, Just Jade designer series paper and we're gonna put mini dimensionals on the backs of those like that. And then we will put regular dimensionals on the back, we've got a flirty flamingo and a misty moonlight. And I'm gonna take this, and you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna stick it right here, like that. And then I'm gonna stick this on top of it and the dimensional holding the blue star is now holding that guy in place. See, I knew what I was doing from the start. So slide that one in underneath slide this one in like that make sure that dimensional oh no i want you to be more sideways than that make sure that dimensional is holding on to that vellum when i made this card that vellum was the last thing oh look oh hello <laughs> was the last thing i put on it was an afterthought so that's why it's kind of like how do i put this on all right and then these little guys we're going to tuck them in like that Hey, and you guys, if you don't want to use flirty, flirty Flamingo, maybe this is for a guy, don't. Just use, you know, one of the other colors or yellow or red or whatever. You're never limited by what colors I used. Okay, good. Thanks, Becky. I'm glad you like this card. Last but not least, I'm going to add some Gilded Gems. These are gold. You could use pretty much any gems that you wanted, but I am using gold to match that gold um, cording there that I have. If you use the silver cording, you'd want to use silver dots. And there we have it. Card number three. No 3D projects this week for my 3D fans. I'm sorry about that. But look, you've got a birthday card. You've got a fall thank you type card and a fun Christmas card. And this too, I think you could put a gift card right here, right? You could use washi tape and tape a gift card to that and that would be cute. All right, now I have a fourth project. 
It does not have a video, but this is going to be on my blog on Monday. I love those little birthday hats, and I embossed in the background, if you can see that. That'll be on my blog on Monday. Um, let's see, there was something I was going to tell you guys. Hold on. I forgot. What was it? I don't know. I don't know. Well, I do know. I need to tell you, if you want these three projects as make and takes, free make and takes, I will be happy to send them to you as a thank you for a minimum $35 order. Make sure your order is in by Monday at midnight. Use that host code. If you click the link at the bottom of today's blog post that says, I don't know, shop now or whatever, it will automatically put the host code in your cart um, so you don't have to worry about it. And if you're looking for the host code, it's above it's in the top right corner of your shopping cart. Um, there's a little thing that you click. So I think it says, oh, look for demonstrator or use host code or something like that. It's kind of hard to find, but it's up in the right corner. Um, okay, you guys, did I miss any questions? Um, thank you, thank you. You guys are so sweet. Thank you very much. All right. Well, that's it for me. I, there's something just right in the corner of my mind that I was going to tell you guys, and I cannot remember what it was. <sighs> Don't you hate that? All right. Well, if I think about it, I will post it. You guys have a wonderful weekend. Be safe. Um, next week, we're moving on to Christmas. I have two sets of projects done. I don't know which one we're going to use, and I can't, honestly can't remember the name of either of them. Um, I think we're going to do the, oh, it's <laughs> the ornament baubles, something beautiful baubles or something. I think we're going to do that one next week and then the other one the following week, but we're, we're ready to move on to Christmas. At least we're going to try to be. <laughs> you guys have a wonderful weekend. Thanks for joining me. I appreciate it. Let me know if you have questions. Um, I will update the top up here, up here, wherever with all the links um, in about five minutes. Thanks for joining me, you guys. See you next week. Bye.